Yes, last class we were discussing uh, Borel sigma algebra on 0, 1 and we were building up towards building uh, building up towards defining uh, the Lebesgue measure or the uniform measure on 0, 1 right. So, the Lebesgue measure it tries to uh, formalize the notion of length right that is really all it is intuitively, but it is a uh, it is a legitimate measure right. So, we took this collection F naught of uh, subsets of 0, 1 which includes the empty sets and sets of this form right so by, by, by which I mean. So, this A 1 so A 1 open closed B 1 and this finite union of such sets where these guys are all disjoint right. We said that F naught uh, we should we, we could easily prove that F naught is an algebra we could also prove that F naught is not a sigma algebra and we finally said that the smallest sigma algebra containing F naught is in fact the Borel sigma algebra right. So, these three facts are very important ok. So, we will use the use it uh, very soon. So, what do we really want right. So, on sets of this form I want the measure of let us say let me call this set let us say f ok let us say I have an f of set, set f of this kind I want ideally I want a probability measure uh, which assigns probability of the set f is equal to what I want it to be b i minus sum over b i minus a i i equal to 1 through n right. I have to define a probability measure such that this is satisfied this is what I really want right. I want the uh, measure of intervals to be b i minus a i right. Now, the problem is I this p has to be defined on a sigma algebra right. I only have an algebra right and on this algebra f naught I know what I want on this algebra right, but on the sigma algebra I do not know what it is right because the sigma algebra will contain more complicated sets the sigma algebra after all is the Borel sigma algebra right and it has some complicated sets they are not necessarily nice sets of this form. So, I do not know what the measure on the sigma algebra is, but I know what I want on the algebra f naught right. So, that so uh, that is the key, st key step now. So, the key step is in going from the algebra sets of this form to the Borel sigma algebra right. So, this is accomplished by a very well known theorem in measure theory called Carrot Theodore's extension theorem right, which I will state without proof uh, we will just utilize the result rather than worry about its proof ok. Let F naught be an algebra on omega and let F is equal to sigma of F naught. Suppose P naught is a mapping from f naught to 0 f naught to 0 1 such that p naught of omega equal to 1 and p naught is countably additive on f naught. Then p naught can be uniquely extended to a 
to a probability measure p on omega f that is there exists a unique probability measure p on omega f such that p of a is equal to p naught of a for all uh, a in f naught. Okay. This is the famous Carroll Theodore's extension theorem. So, uh, our aim will not be to prove this, but our aim, aim is to simply comprehend what it is saying and apply it. Okay. So, the proof is uh, the, the proof is a constructive proof which can be found in uh, David Williams book if for those who are interested, but uh, it is not something that we will bother with. Okay. So, let us try to understand what this theorem says. All right. So, you are given some sample space omega and you are given an algebra on omega not a sigma algebra just an algebra on omega all right and you are trying to so and what you are doing here is to define some kind of a pseudo measure on the algebra okay this p not is see this is not defined on the sigma algebra right it's defined on only the algebra f not right and it has and it's it's a mapping from f not to 0 1 it has the property that p not of omega is 1 and p not is countably additive on f not Okay. If these two conditions are satisfied, then P naught can be uniquely extended to a probability measure on omega f. It, what is f? Sigma f is this guy sigma algebra generated by f naught. Okay, f naught is only an algebra and you are making it into a sigma algebra so to speak. Right? You are taking the smallest sigma algebra containing f naught. So, you can extend this pseudo measure P naught to a legitimate measure P on omega f such that this p agrees with your p naught on the algebra correct is this clear so there is a few things i have to clarify here so this p naught is not a probability measure that is that should be very clear to you p naught is only is a pseudo measure defined only on f naught which is an algebra it satisfies p naught of omega is equal to 1 right because you ultimately want the true probability measure p to satisfy p of omega equal to 1 right and so this is uh, this is important it should be countably additive on f not p not the the pseudo measure that you have should be countably additive on f not now comes a problem so this f not is what kind of an object algebra right now what is countably what is countably additive yeah if i have the so p not of a countable union of disjoint sets must be equal to sum of the p naughts of the those individual sets. Now, the problem is if you take p naught of let us say you take p naught of countable union of disjoint sets, the countable union of those sets in f naught may not be in f naught. Why? It is only an algebra, f naught is only an algebra, it is not a sigma algebra. So, then what do we mean by countably additive on f naught? P naught may not even see. P naught is defined on elements of F naught, but if I take a countable union of sets in F naught, it may not even be in F naught. Then what am I talking about as countable additivity? So this should be understood as if it so happens that the countable union of sets in F naught is in F naught, it may not be. It may not always be, right? Because F naught is only a algebra, not a sigma algebra. So if it so happens that if you take a countable union of disjoint sets in F naught. If it so happens that the union is also an F naught, then you must have countable relativity. Okay, that is the sense in which this should be understood. Okay. So, if these two are satisfied, then I can uniquely identify a measure P, right, which agrees with P naught on my nice sets on my algebra. Right, but the thing about this P is it is defined for all elements of F, not just on F naught. Okay. There exists a unique extension. 
okay, not just that there exists an extension, but there is a unique extension. Okay. Are there any questions on this statement? All right, will be okay. So, this is the theorem that helps us go from what we actually want. So, what have I done, right? So, I want a probability measure to satisfy this, and I, so essentially, I know what I want for subsets in F naught, right? I know P naught of F should be this, right? But if I verify the conditions of Carrot Theodore, I can actually go to a legitimate measure on. 0 1. Okay. So, the steps are as follows. So, clearly see f naught the f naught defined here is already an algebra right. <coughs> so, going back to that uh, so, we have f naught defined earlier earlier is an algebra and sigma of f naught is Borel right that much we already have and now define p naught from f naught to 0 1 such that p naught of null is equal to 0 see I have to define P naught for all elements of these F naught, F naught contains the empty sets and sets of this form. So, for empty set I define it to be 0 as I must right, because I eventually want this P naught to become a measure right and P of F where F is a set of that form sorry P naught of F set of that form should be simply I equals 1 through n. Uh, b i minus a i right. So, this f is I am not repeating this okay. this f is a set like that. Okay. So, I have defined this pseudo measure on the algebra f naught. Okay. Now, the only non trivial step which takes some work and I will not do here is that you can verify countable additivity of P naught on F naught. What do I mean? So, if you take a collection of sets of this form collect. So, if you take uh, a countable collection of sets F i which are of this form and they are disjoint let us say. If it so happens that the countable union of several such sets is also a set of this form it may not be for one thing right because again as I say I showed an example of a set of this form where you take countable union you end up with something that is not like this right. Yesterday we proved that right. So, it may so happen that if you take countable union of several such sets it may not be a set of this form, but if it is a set of this form you can in fact show that P naught is countably additive. Okay. Do you follow what I am saying? This is this is not this is not very trivial again, right? This if you are interested, this is not a very inspiring proof, but if you want to really look at the proof, you can look at David Williams. Uh, but this can be done, right? So next, so non-trivial step is to verify verify countable additivity of P naught on F naught. Okay. So, you do that it actually it can be done there is a proof then what do you have you can apply Carrot Theodore's extension theorem right the conditions of the theorem are satisfied right. Then uh, so, you that is that implies that this P naught can be uniquely extended to a legitimate probability measure on omega f, but what is your f now? Borel sigma algebra right, which means so what did I just say? So, there exists a unique probability measure on omega comma 
B which agrees with the notion of length for intervals, right? But it is a legitimate probability measure in the sense it is defined for all Borel sets. Is that clear? So, this Caro Theodori implies by Caro Theodori. There exists a unique probability measure P on Omega B which agrees with P not on F not. Okay. So, I have just indicated the program, right? I have not really proved all this, but I think for our purposes, uh, since we are not professional mathematicians, I think we can afford to skip the proof of Carrot Theodore's theorem and all, right? So, we can just, just to understand how this Lebesgue measure is properly defined, the, the program for doing it is what is relevant to us. Okay. So, what the statement means in plain English is that for all Borel sets on 0 1, I can define a probability measure, a unique probability measure which corresponds to the notion of length. After all what is P naught? P naught is length, right? Simply if you give it a interval like open A closed B, it gives you the length of it, right? So, it so is a measure, a unique measure that agrees with the notion of length, okay? But it is a legitimate measure in the sense that if you give it something there is some complicated Borel set which is not necessarily just intervals, it will still produce a measure, it will produce an answer, right. You may not be able to a priori tell me what the length of something like the Cantor set is because it is because it is so broken up, right. Yesterday we discussed that, right. So, you keep removing these middle thirds, you, you, ended up, you end up with the scattering of points which is so bizarre that it contains no intervals at all, right. But it is a Borel set, you will prove in your homework that it is a Borel set, right. So, even if you give it a complicated Borel set, this P will produce an answer because it is defined on all Borel sets. Okay, but this P naught will not, the P naught does not operate on complicated sets like the Cantor set, it only operates on these kind of sets. Okay. Is this clear? P naught is not a probability measure because it is defined on an algebra, right. It is a pseudo, I said it is a pseudo measure because it is only defined on the algebra, but we want it to become a legitimate probability measure on the Borel sigma algebra. So, countable relativity need not be Well, no, see, countable relativity means, see, countable relativity of probability measure means if you take a countable union of disjoint sets, you should have the sum of the measures on the right, right. So, the point I was making is P naught is not really a probability measure, but it should still satisfy countable additivity on the algebra. But of course, because F naught is only an algebra, countable union of disjoint sets may not even be in the algebra, right. So, this statement will be interpreted as if at all the countable union is in your algebra, if it so happens to be in your algebra, then it should have countable additivity. Yes, that is the that is the property of it. No, I have not. No, so uh, the the translational invariant part. See, the translational invariant part. Uh, uh, earlier, what I said is that there is no translational invariant measure on omega two power omega, right? What I have said now is that I have a measure that uniquely satisfies. So, I, it satisfies uh, the notion of length on intervals and it is a legitimate measure on the Borel sigma algebra, right. What you can prove now is that this P is in fact translationally invariant on the Borel sigma algebra, not on 2 power omega, okay. P is only on Borel, right. You cannot do P on 
2 power omega right because it is to be there is an impossibility theorem. So, now this p has satisfies this notion of translational invariant and corresponds to a notion of length on Borel sets. Okay. Any other questions? Okay, so now the task is so we know that there exists this measure, right? Now the question is so, but we only know the measure in explicit form for sets like that. Right, if, if I give you a set open A closed B, you will tell me that the measure is B minus A. Right, but if I give you some other set, you do not know what you know that unique measure exists on Borel sigma algebra, but you do not know what it is. So, what we will try and do now is uh, give you measures of compute measures of certain commonly encountered subsets. Okay. So, definition. Uh, so, let me actually not let us forget this. This P is called, let me just write here, this P the Lebesgue measure. On 0 1. So, uh, strictly I should say 0 1 comma B. Right. So, this unique measure scalar theory tell, theorem tells me that there is a unique measure on the Borel sigma algebra which corresponds to the notion of length all right. This measure is called the Lebesgue measure. Okay. It is also I see because this interval is only the length of this interval is 1 it is also a probability measure on 0 1. Why? Because P naught of omega itself is 1. So, if it so happens that your, inter your interval is 0 2 right, then the length will be 2 right. So, th in that case you can similarly define a Lebesgue measure, but it will not be a probability measure. In order to make it a probability measure on 0 2, you have to scale things down by the length of the interval right, length of your omega. Right. So, once you have defined a uniform probability measure on 0 1, you can do it for any in the interval a b right. You can define a uniform probability measure on any interval a b of the real line. Okay. We will, so you can, it so turns out you can also do Borel sigma algebra and Lebesgue measure on the whole real line. Okay. That is something we will get to very soon. But before that, I want to explore this Lebesgue measure on 0, 1 a little bit more. Okay. So, everybody okay with that? So, that is just a terminology. This measure P, unique measure P is called Lebesgue measure. Okay. So, now so we have singleton. B. All right. So we know that a singleton is a Borel measurable set. We proved it yesterday, right, or the day before. I don't know, right? We proved express B as a countable intersection of open intervals, and then proved that therefore singletons are Borel measurable sets. If it's a Borel measurable set, our Lebesgue measure assigns a value to it, right? Intuitively, what do you think should the value of a singleton should be? 0 it should be 0 right because you are talking about length and you ideally want the one point to have 0 Lebesgue measure 0 length right that is true right but you have to prove it right. So, you have to you have to prove that P of B is 0 how do you prove that see remember I only know the Lebesgue measure for the empty set and sets of the form 
open a closed b or countable unions thereof this is not a set of that form correct so what do i do ha huh, i have to do some trick like that right so i have to do let's see if this is right uh, so i can do p of intersection n equals 1 through infinity uh, open b minus 1 over n b plus 1 over n i should close it here right because i know only the measures of sets of that kind right but i should also intersect with omega just so that it doesn't get out of my sample space intersection omega that's not a big deal uh are all the brackets in place so yeah so this is the p of all this intersection okay so that you will agree because b is we wrote b as an intersection of all these guys i am just closing it now this side now because i only know the measure of these sets correct now so so first step okay now what can i do now see these guys let's call that set some bn or something okay now bns are what kind of sets so b1 will be b minus 1 b plus 1 intersection omega and b2 will be b minus half b plus 4 half intersection omega then b3 will be so what kind of sets are these nested decreasing they are russian dolls remember russian dolls so they are they go down like that right so these bns are nested decreasing sets a sequence of nested decreasing sets now if i have probability of an intersection of nested decreasing sets i can use what theorem continuity of probability measures to write this as limit n tending to infinity probability of bn right this is by continuity of probabilities right write down if you want on this arrow right and this is because of continuity of probabilities this is a non trivial step remember how difficult not difficult but it was fairly involved to prove a the continuity right so this this is an important step now what can you say about the probability of bn do you know the measure of bn bn see if it's after all if it's just p minus 1 by n to b plus 1 by n the measure is 2 by n except you may cut it off with omega at some point right so this is definitely a borel set bn is a borel set and its measure is at most 2 by n it could be equal to 2 by n or something even smaller right because it may cut it off with a sample space right so this is so this is less than or equal to limit n tending to infinity 2 by n right because p of bn is less than or equal to 2 by n okay and that is zero correct so this requires a proof right it's not so you only know the measures of sets of this form right so in order to work out what the measure of singleton is you have to use continuity of probabilities okay so without this step it's not correct at all right is this clear to everyone see now you can figure out a lot of things so now if i ask you what the measure of open interval ab is what will you do ha huh, so i will write i know the measure of open a closed b which i will write as union of open it away ab and union of the singleton but i know the singleton has zero measure right so from this i can conclude that all these intervals which are either open one side or closed one side closed both sides they all have same measure b minus a right so which is very nice right so the length is uh, does not depend on whether you are closing it on this side or that side right so you can easily prove that this p i'm of course referring referring to the lebesgue measure throughout by this p okay so 
So you can prove that. Yes. Uh, can we do with B? Maybe you can do with B, right? You can do with just B, I guess. Right? I think if you suppress that, nothing changes, I think. Right? I think it is still okay. Fine. The answer is still the same, right? Yeah, that is right. You, you do not have to, you can get rid of that if you want. Then you will have 1 by n instead of 2 by n, right? Uh, can show probability of uh, open A B equals probability of uh, closed A open B is equal to probability of closed A B is all equal to B minus A. So, these are all subsets of 0 1 let us say, right. So, far okay, because I know that the singleton has 0 probability, I can I only know the probability of open A closed B, but I can infer the probability of these guys using the probability of singleton is 0. Okay, so, now we have figured out the probability measure of singleton and all intervals, all kinds of intervals, right. But what if I give you something more complicated, not necessarily more complicated, but something like this probability of all rationals right. So, what I am talking about is probability of Q intersection omega omega is 0 1 right. I am looking at the probability measure assigned to all the rational numbers in the set of all rational numbers in 0 1. Now, first of all are the set is the, the set of all rational numbers a Borel set on 0 1 why it is countable. So, it is a see it is a countable union of singletons singletons are Borel. So, rationals are Borel, right. So, rationals will have a measure, right. What is the Lebesgue measure of the set of all rationals? Why? Yeah, so the probability, so you have to write it properly, right. So, the this is the, rash, the set of all rational numbers is a countable union of disjoint singletons, right, which are in fact your rational numbers. Probability of each singleton, each rational number is 0. So, by countable additivity, countable additivity of measures I will have this is 0. Okay. Fine. So, this is so here you encounter a situation where the, see there are so many rationals in 0 1 right in any little interval of 0 1 you have infinitely many rationals, but what I am saying in intuitively what I am saying is if I am throwing a dart uniformly to land on 0 1 interval, it has probability 0 precisely 0 of landing on a rational number. See the probability is not approximately 0, it, it is 0, Okay, it is actually exactly 0, right. So, here is the now, here we come to the con, uh, the confusion that students usually have. Okay. So, the if you say that the probability of an event, so in this case the event is getting a rational number, right. If you say that the probability of an event is 0, it does not mean that the event will not occur, that is not what we are saying, right. It just says the probability is 0, that is it. See, the null set has probability 0, but it is not true that all sets that have probability 0 have are in fact empty not at all true right. So, in this case there are infinitely many sets. So, this set is infinite right there are countably. So, there is a countable infinity of rationals in 0 1, but still the probability measure assigned by this uniform measure is 0 right. So, which means that if you generate a random number in 0 1 uniformly at random according to this measure the probability of it being a rational number is is is, is 0 it is not approximately 0 it is in fact 0 right. 
So take some time to digest this. It does not mean that you will not get a rational number. It just means that the probability of getting a rational number is 0. Right? Is this clear? So this is some this is a standard confusion in the minds of students to begin with. Because see this these kind of uncountable sample spaces, these kind of seemingly bizarre uh, situations occur, right? When in in countable discrete probability is all very nice, right? There is nothing to worry about. Right? Things like this will never happen. Right. So is this clear? Any questions on this? So the probability of any countable set on 0, 1 will in fact be, it is not just rationals, right? you take any countable set you want on 0, 1, let us say algebraic numbers, computable numbers, any countable subset of 0, 1 will have 0 probability, right. Probability definition previously said it is, it is the probability of happening one thing in this quadratic because it is saying that it can also happen, but it is also probability zero. Yes, so which is what I am saying that is that that intuitive understanding is wrong, right? So if you if you say that the probability of an event is zero, it does not mean that that event is null set. It does not mean that the event will not occur. Okay, so if you throw a dart at zero one, it can land at 0.5 because 0.5 is a element of your sample space right every element of sample space is a possible outcome so it could so happen that your your dart lands on 0.5 or 0.3 whatever you want but the probability of that happening is zero probability of landing on a rational is zero right so which is why so the this is a misconception that exists in the minds of many students because you are used to this discrete discrete probability spaces right so you can have infinite sets assigned probability 0. In fact, even more bizarre, you know that the Cantor set is uncountably infinite. It is a much bigger set than the set of rationals, right. It is a scattering of points which is this bizarre scattering of points. You know it is a Borel set. So it must have some probability measure. It is an uncountable set, right. It is a much bigger set than rationals, right. So, it is an uncountable infi infinity of points which still has 0 measure, okay, you will prove that in your homework. Okay, because what happens is you keep removing these open intervals the middle third, the measure of all the intervals that you remove will in fact add up to 1. So, what remains is it is a 0 measure set, but it is an uncountably infinite set. So, it is not as though uncountably infinite sets of 0 1 will necessarily have positive probability measure even that is not true right so you will prove that the cantor set has zero measure okay try it as a homework okay it will be in your homework in any in any case okay so far okay yes probability so probability measures are yes events here are in fact borel sets so what is then the meaning of probability being zero with it's just that the event has zero probability right that's all there is to it It does not mean that the event will not occur. Okay, that is that connection you should not make. Zero does not have Sorry. Zero does not have no, I mean so I am assigning probabilities to subset of omega, right? I have not given any frequentist interpretation or any such thing. I am simply putting measures on sets, right? If you are imagining it to be this and that, it's I mean that's not I mean it may not be right, right? So I am saying that subsets, all Borel sets will have a Lebesgue measure. If you take sets like rationals they have probability measure precisely 0 not approximately 0 okay it is in fact equal to 0 zilch right there is there is no question about this it does not mean that a rational cannot occur in 0 1 it very well can right its probability is 0 that's all right so these kind of events so when an event has probability 0 you say that in english so the terminology used is it almost surely will not occur 
okay, it is again it is a terminology and if an event has probability 1 you say it almost surely will occur. So, if I say an event is almost surely going to occur that does not mean the event is omega no right. For example, if I take probability of irrationals in 0 1 it should be what 1 because this is 0 right. So, if I if you throw a dart uniformly at random on 0 1 almost surely the event of an irrational will occur right almost surely an event of a rational will not occur right that is the terminology used, but that does not mean that this set is empty or that this set is omega it is not right. Yes. So, can I relate this continuity and probability somehow? No, cannot. So, all you know is that countable sets under countable sets have to have 0 measure, but it is not true that uncountable set necessarily have non 0 measure that is not true. Countable sets definitely have 0 measure under this uniform measure right. Uncountable sets may have 0 measure may have positive measure right. So, an example of a, so this set sets like these intervals have non 0 measure, but a Cantor set is an uncountable set which has precisely 0 measure. So, if you throw a dart on uh, 0 1 uniformly at random the probability of it landing on a Cantor point is precisely 0 although the Cantor set is an uncountably infinite set ok. Any other questions? Yes. So, the probability of irrationals in 0 1 is 1 minus the probability of rationals because p of a is 1 minus p of a complement we that is the first probability first probability property we proved. So, probability of rationals is 0 because it is a countable union of singletons. So, this must be 1 right. Okay, so, I want to just indicate how this. So, if this is is this okay, the Lebesgue measure on 0 1. So, I want to quickly uh, b build this Lebesgue measure on R. The, the theory is very similar, but it is not a probability measure anymore, right. It is just length, right. So, if you have, so if you want to talk about Lebesgue measure on R, so you should first build your sigma algebra right. You should have to build your sigma algebra on on subsets of R right all subsets of R. Um, now, how do you do it again you start off saying that I only certain sets are of interest to me right. So, one standard way of doing it is you take C naught as the collection of all open intervals on open intervals which are in R ok and you take you generate the sigma algebra of those open intervals and you call that the Borel sigma algebra ok. Actually there are multiple ways of doing it there are at least three equivalent ways of doing it. So, you can uh, let C naught be the collection of all open intervals in R, then B of R the Borel sigma algebra on R is defined to be sigma of C naught ok just like in the previous case right you just took the sigma algebra generated by open intervals doing the same thing except this B is on this is the Borel sigma algebra on the entire real line. Now, see on see in the 0 1 interval we proved that you can generate the sigma algebra Borel sigma algebra using either open intervals 
or these f0 kind of sets or even closed intervals right they all lead to the same sigma algebra so similarly on r there are multiple ways of generating the same sigma algebra b okay another way is to define it let d be the collection of semi infinite intervals that is d is the set of all semi infinite intervals such that x is in r right so these are intervals like that minus infinity to x right again you can what you can show is that the sigma algebra generated by d is in fact borel sigma algebra this is another way of generating the same sigma algebra right you take the semi infinite intervals and you create the sigma algebra generated by that that is that is one sigma algebra see the problem is now you have defined the same thing br in two different ways right whenever you define the same thing in two different ways what do you have to do you have to prove that they are equivalent definitions right so you have to prove that the sigma algebra and the sigma algebra are one and the same right so in that sense they are not both definitions one of them is a definition the other must be proved as a result right or you have to say if both are definitions then they are both equivalent right so this is one uh, this is so borel sets on r r either generated by open intervals on r or semi infinite in closed intervals on r right uh i in fact yet another way to define it is to say that a set on uh, so in terms this is in terms of sigma algebra another way of defining borel sets on r is to say that if you take a subset of r that set is a borel set on r if intersections with each of these n n plus 1 intervals is a borel set on n n plus 1 right so we know borel sets on each of these length 1 intervals we already defined it so if these intersections taken with all these n n plus 1 intervals are all borel sets you say that the set on r is a borel set so you can say that is you can show that is also the same sigma algebra right now again so now if you once you've defined this borel sigma algebra on the real line now we have to go ahead and define lebesgue measure right how would you do it you take same same story right you take f0 which are sets of the form a b o a a1 b1 union a so on same story right and then you verify kara theodori holds right and then say conclude that there is a unique measure that corresponds to length right so repeat the same story okay so that will lead to a measure on r br right just the repeat of the same story will give you a measure uh, that's that's called a lebesgue measure on r okay uh so that measure the lebesgue measure on r is usually denoted by lambda okay so we will say that so i would i have not really gone over this in great detail just because uh it's the same story repeated again except the borel sigma algebra is defined in one of many equivalent ways right so what you will have is so lambda is a this is the lebesgue measure measure on r br in other words r br lambda will be a measure space okay this guy corresponds to length okay on r is this a finite measure no right because you are associating ha uh, length right and lambda of r will be plus infinity remember measures can be infinite right so the lebesgue measure is not a probability measure it's simply a ordinary measure right it's just a measure it's not a probability measure in fact it's a fi infinite measure it just corresponds to the notion of length on r okay and the machinery to build it up is exactly the same once you have defined the borel sigma algebra on all of the real line 
then you apply Kerr theory and the same story follows. Okay. Okay, so I think it's time for me to stop. Thanks. <laughs>